Gary Glitter, the documentary. Talks about two different people, Paul Gad and Gary Glitter, the stage name. One quite definitely facilitated the other. The fame, the glam rock, brought in the youngsters, the celebrities, the shows. This is your life, who remembers that? It was massive. People invited onto the show and a whole host of surprise guests turn up. Kids shows. The documentary opens with a sickening interview with no other than Jimmy Savile. With hindsight, which I don't believe in, it's easy to look now and see, but they are mocking people. People knew what Jimmy Savile was a long, long time ago. Gary Glitter, uh, very much the same in showbiz. They were facilitated. Clues were there. Two guys who were doing security when he was touring, unloading a box, a load of images dropped out. Sick images. They confronted him. I'll pay you money, guys. They just told him to do one. Won't work for him. Walked away. People will have known lots of people. Interviews. Sally James. Who remembers her on Tis Was? Lovely lady. You know, one of them sort of girls as a teenage boy you dream about. She's talking about Gary Glitter, charming, a proper gentleman, you know, not offering her no attention, polite. She says, looking back now, he wasn't interested in people like me. He wasn't interested in adults. He kept it professional and friendly. The more he did, the more he'd be invited back and he'd go on other kids' shows. The clues were there. When it came out about the indecent images later on in his career, someone who was eight at the time was angered and came out. This person was anonymous at first and then gave that up when they realized their case would never go to trial a judge deemed too much time had passed a 14 year old challenged him it was in the news of the world now there's a scandalous paper it was talking about him being with someone of 14 years of age. The judge leading the jury said people at 14 can be mature, can be young women. Some 14 year olds are childlike. You need to decide which person this was. 14 is 14, is it not? It was there in the news of the world. And what did everyone focus on? The first pictures of Gad, or Gary Glitter, bald, without his wig on. People chose to ignore the obvious. Sickening, to say the least. Very sickening. He was convicted Early 2000s, he started traveling. For me, someone who harms, has no respect for young people, children, this is just me, should be marked up on a database that flashes everywhere in this world. So when he added for, or headed for, sorry, Cambodia and the like, people would know what he was, why he was there. Cambodia, at that time, well known 
for people like Glitter. There was people over there that recognised what he was and eventually chased him out of the country. I think for me, the sickening thing about the documentary is along the way the clues were there but people chose to ignore them. There's an early Children in Need charity event. He's on stage and there's three well-known Radio 1 DJs all dressed like him, like Gary Glitter, all saying how he was their childhood heroes. Clues all along, clues in his lyrics, his songs, some of his videos. These people are definitely supported, definitely supported and facilitated. They're very clever. There's a victim talks out and says what these people are really good at doing is making it feel like you're the only person that these things, these terrible things are happening to. It's not happening to other people, just you. Other people are safe. It's just you that's the focus of their attention. He got 16 years. Served off, locked back up, just being turned round for parole. This is why these sentences should be longer and people of his nature should be made to serve the full term. If they show no remorse and we don't come up with something that is going to change these people and we can't because they don't, then they stay in forever. If they ever get out, as close as you can monitor somebody, they're monitored. Put a chip in the brain so you can monitor them anywhere in the world. Stop them traveling. Take the passports off them. I know some of you are going to talk about human rights and the like, but once you violate someone's human rights, then yours should no longer exist. They're the worst of worse ruins people's lives i think the other sickening thing is you know as kids we idolize these people discos remember being places vivid memories can't even imagine what it's like for people who've grown up with these terrible terrible memories of events that should never happen to any child Look after your children, we should put them on pedestals and protect them as much as we can. There's more good people in the world than bad. God bless you all. Thanks for coming, I'll see you there.